revealing the secrets of the universe is a universal phenomenon. Behind me is a telescope, a gamma ray telescope, the world's highest located telescope. India made it. India is going to use it. World's envy, India's pride. I have with me Dr. A.K. Mohanty. He is the chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission, the secretary of the Department of Atomic Energy, but a particle physicist at heart. DAE does many things, but today we speak about the science which the Department of Atomic Energy does. Uh, Dr. Mohanty, this telescope we have behind us, what is the name and what does this gamma ray telescope do? Mr. Bagala, good morning. And this telescope which you are seeing behind us, it is called MESH telescope, Major Atmospheric Cherenkov Imaging Telescope. And it is a telescope, first of its kinds, in the following way. It is made in India, completely made in India. One of the largest telescope, 21 meter diameter, and first largest in Asia and it is located in the highest altitude of the gamma ray spectroscopy. And this telescope is meant to study the gamma rays coming from the universe, various galaxies and intergalaxies. And ultimately, it will be appearing as a Cherenkov radiation, and which is an optical region. And this telescope will be detecting the imaging, the Cherenkov radiation. And from there, they will understand where it would have come from. Now, let me tell our viewers, we are standing at nearly 4,500 meters above sea level at Hanle and Ladakh. And I am with Dr. A.K. Mohanty. Many years back, Dr. Mohanty and I stood together in India's deepest science laboratory, situated in Jadugoda, called the Dark Matter Laboratory. And today, we are together standing at India's highest scientific observatory at Hanle. How do you feel, sir? We met below the ground and we are meeting high above in the Himalayas. In fact, that is the underground 50 meter down. It is the only existing underground laboratory at this moment. And that is started when I was the director of Sahai Institute of Nuclear Physics and you came there. And there the aim was to detect rare processes including dark matter by direct detection. If there is a dark matter, it was expected that we will be detecting, putting detector in that uh, underground laboratory. But this telescope, the scientists here, my colleagues, they are also planning, apart from studying galaxies, etc., to detect dark matter, but of different type. If there is a dark matter in the galaxies, then uh, they will be annihilating. And because of these two gamma dark matter, after annihilating, they will produce very high energy gamma rays. That gamma rays will come and it will be finally in the Cherenkov radiation will be detected. So detection procedure is different. That was a direct search, this will be indirect search. And I feel both are complementary to each other. But together we were there below the earth and at a high altitude location. Looks like that. Chasing it, dark matter. Yes. Looks like that in this discovery or in this process of discovering, we are together all the time. Certainly. <laughs> now, what are the other areas of science which the Department of Atomic Energy does in the area of cosmology, in astrology, astrophysics. Now, if you see the Department of Atomic Energy in the area of astronomy and astrophysics, it started way back. This gamma ray just astronomy, if you see, started from Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. This Hagar telescope, which we are seeing, just a small telescope started by TIFR. And, but later the ones on, which we are seeing on the side Which there. we are seeing these, later, they are the Hager, telescope. Hager's telescope. But now we are not using, because, because of this the mesh telescope of imaging type, the type of uh, physics what can do is much improved. So this <coughs> is developed by BRC in collaboration. Also, TIFR is collaborating with this along with some of the university people, IITs. And this is one type of physics where they will be detecting gamma rays coming from the galaxies, intergalactic phenomena. If there is a dark uh, galaxies, some signal may come from that. And uh, also the phenomena, what is happening near the black hole, if there are two jets 
and out of which if there are signal coming in the form of gamma rays very very high energy gamma rays this detector will be able to detect it so this is basically a phenomenon of the galaxies where charged particles are taking participations so from the if there is a charged particle and one need to understand what is the mechanism by which these high energy gamma rays are produced so is it really a carry forward from the work which the father of india's nuclear program homi jahangir baba did on cosmic rays now you are carrying it forward is it correct in a way inspiration has come from that only cosmic cosmic ray study started by homi jahangir baba so this legacy is still carried forward in fact uh, we have another group in tfr they are located in gmrt telescope which is a giant, giant meter wave meter radio wave. telescope they are on that uh, yes they are also studying galaxies But on the other end, they are concentrating the radio waves. This is gamma wave, gamma rays and Cherenkov radiation, but they are detecting the radio waves. So they are also studying similar phenomena. Now a common thing has happened: if there are gravity waves happening, okay, directly we have a LIGO in India, which is again led by the Department of Atomic Energy, which is coming in Hingoli, which will detect a gravitational wave. But along with the gravity waves, there may be other signals. Simultaneously, people are planning to detect. in mesh telescope also in gmrt type of telescope also and many other related uh, signals can be detected what they call multi messenger signaling so for all the way from gamma rays which is so uh, short in frequency and amplitude all the way to gravitation waves which are very large amplitude yes. is it correct that both all the spectrum you are studying department is studying But there are detectors are different, like LIGO different LIGO the lab the gravity wave study we are using laser interpret interferometer gravity observatory which will come in the LIGO. There the detector is L shaped four kilometer arms through which laser will be moving. And uh, but the phenomena what is causing gravity wave also may cause other signals which will be detected depending on that if it is a electromagnetic signal or associated with a gamma rays this detector can de detect so it is a multi messenger signaling how so, much do we understand of the universe and cosmos see the universe and cosmos today we do not understand much roughly if i say it is 4 to 5% we have understood because rest we call it is a dark energy and dark matter still it is an unknown so these are in the form of dark matter dark energy so there are many ways to understand them so inverse is still a black box to us except 5% or 4% is visible to us so what is dark matter and dark energy and what percentage does it constitute if you put together dark energy and dark matter together so it will be about 95% let us say and remaining 5% is what visible to us for which there are signals we can detect it And so whatever we are seeing is only five percent of the universe. Ninety-five percent of the universe is still unknown to us. Rounding up the figure, it is yes, ninety-five percent. And since we do not know, it is difficult to say what are they. So as you say, once we are going to Jadugada underground, we say if dark matter there is a particle, it will be very high mass, and it comes through, then probably we will able to detect in the detector. But then it has not happened yet. even even there are dark matter we think they can annihilate into gamma rays so indirectly that gamma rays comes out and we will able to detect even this type of detector also but then it has not happened yet how good is india compared to the world in looking at this area of science which is astronomy cosmology astrophysics i think we are part globally if you see gmrt facility is international facility people all over the country globally all over the world they are coming and using the facilities even this facility mass facility also attracted lot of people from outside those who are part of the city a collaboration that is called cherenkov telescope array outside some of them have expressed interest even come with their detector and put it here you also have a collaboration with the neutron coll uh, the collider cern which is in geneva and switzerland they are also searching for truth how does it all coalesce that is a very different type of thing cern what is happen these are the colliders the particular particularly cern machine large hadron collider it is a proton machine two proton collides 
and it is a accelerator based on the ground and in the collision there are many particles come out comes out for example higgs boson was discovered there in 2013 so it is one group of experiment india is also partic participating but uh, what here they are discussing there are cosmic accelerator where the particle can be accelerated much more than what it is happening at cern and if that type of acceleration happening they will also produce very very large energy gamma rays which the accelerator cannot produce and this type of gamma rays can be expected to be detected in this type of not in this present form of mesh detector but similar gamma ray astronomy can address them so exciting times for science in india always as i said there are many things to be discovered so science not only in exciting in india science is always global it is exciting globally everywhere obviously it will be exciting to india as well thanks a lot for speaking to me dr mohanty we met underground in jadugoda at the dark matter laboratory which is 550 meters below the earth and today we meet at hanle in ladakh 4500 meters above mean sea level so both of us have covered almost 6 kilometers from below the earth to high in the earth a wonderful period of science for india india investing heavily in science and technology indian institutions contributing for india to become developed country science is important technology is important and all of this contributes for the development of india if india has to become a viksit bharat or a developed nation by 2047 then instrumentation like this contribute heavily towards the development of india camera person rohit vishkarma at this sophisticated gamma ray telescope set up by the department of atomic energy in the high altitude cold desert of ladakh in hanle palav bagla for ndtv <laughs>